How do we remind people where they stand with us? Do conversations cut it anymore? Today in our lounge, sometimes the parental controls just don't cut it. Sometimes we have to let the lawyers do the talking. Up first, time to break up with the mother-in-law. It's not me, it's you. My mother-in-law is trying to take my unborn baby. A bit of backstory. My, 22 female, baby daddy, John, 21 male. We're only together a few months before I got pregnant. Since we found out we have a lot of problems as a couple, I decided back in October to not be together, but still live together and work towards amending things slowly. We have discussed that if either of us start to pursue or did anything with anyone else, then any chance of fixing things would be gone. John's mother, Lily, 40s female, has been nothing but cold towards me since finding out about the pregnancy. Lily raised John and his siblings, 22 male, 18 female, and 15 male, in a religious household until she divorced their dad when she found out he was cheating on her. Before this, they had a very sheltered childhood, not allowed to watch The Simpsons because the devil is in it, not allowed to go to people's houses if they weren't religious, etc. The kids were also punished for playing too loud after school, missing a bit of dirt when doing chores, not eating all their dinner, and the punishments were extreme. Lily and John's younger siblings are not COVID vaccinated as Lily is strongly against it. John and I are both double vaccinated. When I was about 15 weeks pregnant, Lily and the youngest two kids came over one day to talk about the baby and I reminded John that we were able to get our COVID booster shots, which Lily then began to argue with me about saying I was pregnant and couldn't have it. After I explained that I had already spoken to my general practitioner and midwife about it and they said it was fine, she continued to argue until John's little sister asked about what last name the baby was going to take. This caused Lily to argue again as I wanted the baby to take my last name. Since this day, Lily hasn't really spoken to me. We went out for dinner one night and she practically ignored me and only spoke to John. She's come to the house and asked John to see the ultrasound photos even when I was standing next to her. She's come to the house and asked John how the baby was even when I'm standing in the next room inside of her. She has called the police for a wellness check of John multiple times and has shown up to our house. She lives about an hour away, unannounced multiple times. John and I have had many arguments about her behavior, how she makes me uncomfortable and I'm not sure when I will be ready for her to meet the baby as she can't respect boundaries. I always get accused of trying to keep her away from her first grandchild, but to me, she doesn't have a right when she hasn't been present at all and treats me the way she does. To be clear, her and I have never actually had a fight or anything. Two weeks ago, John and I got into a huge fight. Nothing got physical, nothing was thrown, there wasn't even a lot of yelling, and he called his mom to vent, but he told her not to come to the house. I ended up leaving and Lily showed up at the house, called the police, and tried to have a DVO put in place that wouldn't allow me contact with John, and she also asked that CPS be called so that I wouldn't see the baby. John said that he didn't want that. She told John she didn't want me to be able to see the baby, and she wanted it taken from me at the hospital. Since then, I have had to go to court and fight the DVO. I did and won. But now CPS has come by the house to investigate the claims that have been made, which I already proved wrong in court, but now have to do it again. I don't speak with most of my family and the family I do speak to lives a few hours away. I have tried to talk to John about the way his mother behaves again as now it has gone too far and I don't want her to know anything but he keeps saying he won't talk about it as he is sick of being stuck in the middle of this petty war. He says he can't do anything about it as she is her own person and doesn't listen to him but continues to tell her things in our lives. I don't know what to do anymore as I want to make it work with him because I love him and we may not be perfect we argue but a lot of them end up worse because of her. I have asked him what does she have to do before he accepts this is who she is and she only is going to get worse when the baby is here but he just says we'll deal with it when it comes. I haven't had contact with her at all in months and have had her blocked on everything for months but she still keeps going. I honestly don't know what to do anymore. I'm due any day now. Let's see what the community thinks. She is the moon starts us off. You need to read a bunch of the head posts in this sub and then be honest with yourself. She will never stop fighting you and he will never stand up for you. You are alone in this fight and she will keep trying to take your child. Seriously consider leaving. At a minimum, you need to keep stringent records of all of this, his behavior and hers both. You will 150% end up needing it to defend yourself of all the claims she is already working on to hurl against you to have your child removed. Secretly record her doing crazy stuff build an armory of ammo against her. She tried to have your child taken before it's been born and for you to never even lay eyes on your baby. 
That's extra crazy. It's hard to get more serious than that. She will hurt the baby to hurt you. She has already tried. Wake up. No relationship is worth that. He won't even stand up for his own baby. Imagine what she might do once she exhausts all the court options and doesn't get what she wants. Scary thought. If you stay in this relationship or whatever it is as defined, you are staying in a relationship with mother-in-law too. Is that really how you want to spend the next 20 years of raising a child? Fighting for her over your right to be a mother to your unborn child? She will never back down. Dry Pineapple 1556 chimes in. This situation won't have a happy ending. Start considering other options. Mrs. Mushroom says, other living options in places where this lady can't find you. Choice Ganache 5354 says, first I would contact a lawyer. Then I would move and go no contact with significant other and his mother. I would no longer have contact with anyone that calls CPS on me, especially with an unborn child. The fact that your significant other can't and won't defend you against his insane mother is unacceptable. This is not a petty war. Please get out. The stress alone is not healthy for your pregnancy. This seems like an incredibly toxic situation, OP, and one that you may have to let go of. If someone truly loved you, they'd be willing to fight tooth and nail for you. Right now, he's not doing that, and he might not ever. I'm not sure you need someone who is not willing to support you and have your back, especially when it comes to your child. If the plan was to work slowly on getting back together, it's not working. You need to protect yourself. What do you think OP should do? Next, you give people an inch, and they take a mile. Am I the a-hole for putting parental controls on my TV and royally pissing off my father-in-law? I, male 30s, live with my wife, female 30s. We have two kids, male 8 and female 6. My wife's parents are staying with us temporarily as their home is having some serious repairs after a freak accident. It wasn't their fault, and luckily they had insurance. The repairs should be completed in two months from now. I don't really get along with my in-laws, especially my father-in-law but I agreed to let them stay because I thought the time would fly by and it wouldn't be that bad. But I'm posting here, so I guess I was wrong. My mother-in-law doesn't have a job and my father-in-law works late shifts until around 11 p.m. When he gets home, they will watch YouTube in the living room and play music on it at a loud volume with our speaker system. It's not college house party bass tearing apart the walls loud, but it is still loud. My kids are not light sleepers, but this wakes them up. Then they go wake me up because they want me to make it stop. My kids need to be rested for school and I need to get up in the morning to drop them off and go to work. My wife works overnight shifts so she doesn't witness this. I tried to talk to my mother-in-law and father-in-law about it and ask that they please keep the noise down after my kids bedtime which is 8.30 p.m. I don't expect complete silence but I really don't think they need to have the TV on loud late at night. My father-in-law argued with me and said that he doesn't finish work till 11 p.m. so I'm basically expecting him to not do the things he enjoys after work. I told him he can do it before work or on his days off, or it's tough crap. He complained to my wife, who's now taking his side and saying that the kids need to learn how to sleep through a bit of everyday noise. I told her it's not everyday noise and that he and mother-in-law are being excessively noisy and inconsiderate. She's just not there to see it. My father-in-law has been sending me links to buy earplugs for the kids. I've gotten really fed up with this. It's not my in-law's house and they're staying with us as guests and I think they're being really selfish. I decided to put parental controls on the TV so the man laws can't use it after 8.30 p.m. until 6 a.m. the next day. Between those times, the TV can't be used without putting in the password and only I know it. This doesn't affect my wife as she doesn't get off work until 6 a.m. and isn't normally home until 6.20ish. My father-in-law is now incredibly pissed off with me and said that I'm acting like a child and keeps pestering me, demanding the password. My wife is also mad at me for upsetting her dad. I'm just so annoyed at this whole situation and I'm sick of hearing about it, so I just wanted to know if I'm morally in the clear. The community definitely has some opinions. Fireflies 80 starts us off. Not the a-hole. Your in-laws are rude and inconsiderate, and your wife should be managing them and backing you up on this. Had she done so, you would not need to take such drastic measures. Both you and the kids need your sleep. The in-laws are guests in your home. This is wildly inappropriate for them to act this way. If they don't like the house rules, they can go to a motel. Spunky Radcat says, I wonder if father-in-law and mother-in-law steamrolled wife so much growing up that she has a hard time setting boundaries with them. You're correct either way, but every time I see someone rolling over for their parents in posts like this, I have to wonder if that's what's going on because the in-laws are obviously in the wrong. Robovsky says, not the a-hole. They may be in-laws, but they are guests within your home. You've asked them politely before and they've ignored you. Tell them to read a book to keep themselves entertained. 
Cactus Deluxe chimes in. Not the a-hole. Send your father-in-law links for headphones. Light Green Wings adds, or hotel rooms. You had the adult conversation with him the first time that they need to respect you, your kids, and your home, and they didn't listen. Really, they should be kissing your butts for even providing them a place to stay. They need to abide by the rules. If the kids are in bed and they don't seem to care, that's a them problem and thus the parental controls make sense. Sucks to be them. Maybe they can sit in their room and watch YouTube videos on their phones or laptops. You must definitely aren't the a-hole. Your father-in-law is a self-centered prick. Maybe this will give them the push they need to get their own house in order and move the heck out. Is OP in the wrong? Next, who even are you? Am I the a-hole for losing it and telling the in-laws to stop calling me mama and trying to erase my identity? I have two kids, two female, four female. I freaking hate how everyone thinks of me as being just a mommy now. I don't get to be my own person. I'm just mommy. Husband doesn't face this. He gets gifts from everyone to have to do with his hobbies. Me? I get a bunch of mommy crap. Tee hee, mommy needs wine. And like matching outfits. I don't mean like one of those cutesy matching pajama sets that the nurses and horse girls wear in their staged Christmas instapics. I mean like people actually think I'm going to go out in public wearing some cutesy matching outfits with my toddlers. As though I think they're mini versions of myself. Or dolls? From the time we get to the in-laws, it was mama this and mama that. At some point, my sister-in-law said it, and I said, you know my name is Carmen, right? She just looked at me funny and said, of course, silly. I said, so why do you keep calling me mama? You aren't going around calling husband papa. Sister-in-law just looked at me like I had two heads and was like, um, okay. This went on all over Christmas. Here you go, mama. Want another slice, mama? At that point, I was just like, do you guys mind calling me my name instead of calling me mama? The same sister-in-law as before did the whole golly gee doe-eyed thing and said, but you're such a good mama. I said that I'm not just a mom. I gestured to the things that husband got for Christmas from them and said, why didn't you guys get him anything that says papa? Everything you gave me is somehow related to me being a mom. Why does he get to be his own person? Mother-in-law grabbed my hand and squeezed it and said that she was sorry that she made me feel like this. She was just so excited about being a grandma and she never really thought of things like that. I was feeling a little better until sister-in-law two and sister-in-law three started going after me. One of them did that whole, are you okay? Do you need to talk to someone? You sound so angry, it isn't healthy. Faux concern thing that it's meant to shame you for having an emotional response. The other one was angry and saying that, is being a mom somehow beneath you? And do you think you're better off than the rest of us? And all that. When we finally left, he asked me why I'd kept it in for so long, and I said that I haven't. No one listened to me before. I've said these things plenty of times. I've always asked them to call me by my name, and not some disgusting nickname that boils me down to giving birth. He nodded, but said that I'd put a big pallor on the weekend, and that I need to apologize for the outburst at some point. I said sure, as soon as sister-in-laws apologized to me for dehumanizing me for years. We're at a stalemate. Am I the a-hole? The community has some responses. Pat Poos 187 says, No, your sister-in-laws owe you an apology and you owe them effing nothing, even after. Strangled in Moonlight chimes in, I'm so petty, I'd start calling them sister-in-law all the time and only getting them sister-in-law stuff. Oh, sister-in-law, here's your birthday present. Sister-in-law rides horse. Stuff even if I had to special order it. Erase them and replace it with sister-in-law stuff. Taco Band 1T0 says, Nah, make it related to the kids. Auntie this and auntie that. Get duplicates so they both get identical items. Go a step further from mother-in-law with granny stuff, only if necessary. Claire Clary says, not the a-hole. Once again, this is a case the family members needed to be confronted about their behavior because politely asking them to stop didn't work. And then it's all, why didn't you say something? Your answer to your husband is exactly correct. If you need to apologize for your outburst, then they need to apologize for their failure to listen to you until you reached your breaking point and had an outburst. One more thought from Mutatis Mutandis etc. says, Not the a-hole. Your mother-in-law reacted appropriately in my opinion, saying she didn't realize and had no ill intent, which I believe. Your point is well made and your sister-in-laws just seem like people who can't take feedback. Many of my female friends who had children have expressed the same frustration as you. You're right to speak up. 
I don't think you're an a-hole or in the wrong here at all, OP. I think a boundary definitely has to be made with people because it won't stop otherwise. You aren't just a mom. There are many aspects that make up you and being a mom is only one of them. And people need to be mindful of that, especially if they aren't treating you and your husband the same. Continue to remind people and maybe even dive a little deeper when speaking to them and really tell them how you are feeling. Do you think OP should tell people how she's healing? Thank you for joining us today on our lounge. Before you go, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. If you have something you want to say regarding today's content, share that with us in the comments below.